think this will be pretty, you know, easy win projects. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself by saying that. Hi there, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind Pattern Scout. So my last video, I showed you guys how I made some swimsuits and I love how those swimsuits turn out, but that project really, it really zapped me. The idea of trying to do a total project from start to finish is a little overwhelming right now. And whenever I'm feeling overwhelmed and don't know where to start, I end up planning an unreasonable amount of projects for myself. So that is what I'm gonna do this week. I really wanna make some more dresses. I've actually made a few dresses and um, I've been pretty happy with how they've turned out. I've also been working on a pattern. This shirt is actually the pattern. I'll show you, it's like a cute little peasant top. I love peasant tops. I think they're just so freaking adorable. And I'll have more details on that later. I'm still kind of trying to figure out how I want to go about that pattern. Anyway, I'll talk about that later. So I made a dress using the same pattern and I've been kind of playing around with the style of the dress and the length of the skirt. I did make it a midi length with slits in the side, but I do want to change the skirt up a little bit. I had so much success with the presser foot for my serger when I was making those swimsuits to add the elastic to the swimsuits that I was like, I need to look more into some of these specialty feet to see if they make my life a little easier when it comes to doing some specialty techniques. So I did purchase a gathering foot. I'm gonna test out that foot today on the dress that I wanna lengthen. I'm just gonna add an extra tier that's a gathered tier at the bottom to turn it into a maxi length dress and you know, have a little bit of a slower week working on a few projects that are exciting me right now. Okay. All right, so to test out this gathering foot, I'm just gonna pop it right onto the shank of the sewing machine and test it on a 10 inch strip of fabric. A general rule of thumb for estimating the length of fabric that you need to gather is to make it one and a half times the length of the finished width of fabric. So for a 10 inch strip of fabric, my gathered finished length would be about 6.6 .6 inches because 6.6 .6 times one and a half is roughly 10 inches. For now, we're going to ignore that little slot in the middle of the gathering foot. We're just going to sew this as we normally would right under the presser foot. And as you can see, it's starting to gather the fabric as it passes under the needle. And with a stitch length of a little less than 2.5 millimeters, I did get that 6.6 .6 inch length. So that was perfect. A longer stitch length will make tighter gathers. So this top piece is the one that I did at about 2.25 and this one I did at four millimeters, which got me to a little over five inches, which was a little too tight. You can also sew two pieces of fabric together and have one gathered and one ungathered. Slip your fabric into that little slot for the top piece and it's gonna gather the bottom piece and keep the top piece ungathered. This, however, is really hard to manage and kind of sloppy. I could not figure out a way to do this in a neat way. So it still gathered the fabric just fine, but the finish on it was horrible and I could not keep the seam allowance straight. With my successful test, I was ready to attach the ruffle to the skirt. So I just measured the width of my skirt, which is 25 and a half inches times two would be 51 inches for the total circumference of the bottom of the skirt. And I'll multiply that by one and a half to get the total circumference of the ruffle that I need to add. I'm going to be cutting off the dress at the top of the slit there. So I'm just measuring down from the top of the slit to the length that I want the dress. And that's how long I will make that ruffle. I'll sew the front and the back pieces of the ruffle together at the side seams to create a really large tube. And then I will gather one of the raw edges of the tube using the gathering foot. When using this gathering foot, you wanna make sure that you're not pushing or pulling the fabric too much one way or the other under the foot. You wanna just kinda of guide it so that the gathers stay consistent. Then I will measure the overall circumference of the gathered ruffle to make sure that it matches the circumference of the bottom of the dress. So I've got the ruffle pin based it to the bottom of the dress. I like the location of that. It's way too long. I made it extra long. I'm always paranoid about things not being long enough. Um, so I'll probably will hem it a few inches. The location of the ruffle is good because if I decide that I want to turn this into a short dress, like above the knees, that's a good location for me to cut it and hem it. So this kind of gives me a little bit more room for customization on this thing. If I decide later, I want to change it again, um, depending on how much I wear it. But yeah, I, I think this is really pretty. I like the idea of putting the ruffle on the bottom of this.
After chopping off the bottom of the dress where I want to attach the ruffle, I'm just going to attach the gathered edge of the ruffle to the bottom edge of the dress, right sides together, and I'm going to sew it on my serger. Okay, so the next day I am wearing the dress and today what I want to work on is a little bit of batch cutting. So I have three dress ideas that I'd like to make and I have some fabric that I'm ready to cut into. It's all linen that I found on Amazon and I usually forget that Amazon has fabric. So I used to get a lot of fabric from fabric.com and then Amazon, I think, bought fabric.com and so anyway. Amazon has a lot of fabric as well, but it's just not as enjoyable of a shopping experience over there. So I don't shop on Amazon that much, but I did find some really beautiful linen there. I found this really pretty dark blue and it's, it's a little, it leans a little bit green, just a very, very subtle green undertone in the blue, which I really love. And then I found some really pretty, um, like an olive brown color that I'd like to make a dress out of. And then I also found some kind of terracotta orangey red. And I've been having a hard time finding that particular kind of tone of that terracotta color. So I was really happy to find that because I have three dress ideas that I'd like to make. I don't know if I'll be able to make them this week, but I do want to go ahead and get them cut out so that when I am ready to sew them, I can just kind of hit the ground running and start sewing. All of them are kind of a light to mid-weight linen that I think is really appropriate for, you know, the warmer months and into the early fall. So I will link them below if they're still available. Um, you can go check those out on Amazon. For the blue linen, I think I want to make another dress like this but just a shorter kind of above the knee length dress. I thought that would be really cute. Then for the kind of olive green color, I have this vintage pattern that I found at the thrift store for 50 cents. And it's just a really cute little button up dress. I've been kind of wanting to do a utility kind of patch pocket style sleeveless dress. And I've had this pattern in my stash for a while and I just thought it was really cute and really wanted to try it out. One thing about this pattern, it is a little bit too big for me. So I may have to do a little bit of grading and kind of adjustment to this pattern. But um, I think what I'm gonna try to do with this one is just do a little tissue fitting before I cut it. Cause I don't wanna have to do a muslin. <laughs> and I'm like such a hypocrite right now cause I have preached about making muslins. But for this, I, I really wanna just like hit the ground running. So anyhow, that, that's the plan for that. And for the rust kind of terracotta linen color fabric, I think I wanna make a dress similar to my little black dress that I made using the letter low kit. So I made that last year, really happy with how that turned out. I've already got the pattern and I just wanna split it down the front, add some buttons, make it a little bit longer, like a midi length dress. I also kind of thought about doing some shirring on the back bodice to kind of make that fit a little bit more comfortable back there. Um, and I might do a wider strap to make it a little bit more bra friendly. That's all I'm gonna focus on for today is just getting things cut. And then maybe later this week, I'll start sewing those, but I may save those for next week. So I think these will be pretty, you know, easy win projects. Hopefully I'm not jinxing myself by saying that. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna get cutting. Since this is a single size pattern, I am going to be just cutting the pattern directly out of the tissue paper. If it were multi-size, I might try to preserve the pattern and just trace it, but I'm just gonna go for it. I'm also gonna iron the tissue paper on a very low heat setting and get some of these wrinkles out of it because I wanna do a tissue fitting and I want this to lay as flat as possible. I'll make sure to pin the darts and also pin the shoulder seams and side seams so that I can try on the tissue. And by doing this, I can just kind of get some general info like is the dart 
in the right location? Am I generally gonna have enough ease in this thing? And I think it's gonna work out just fine. I'm a little bit short on fabric for this pattern because I didn't have this pattern in mind when I ordered the fabric, but this pattern has a fold over facing for the center front and it's just not gonna fit if I do it that way. So I'm just gonna measure the pattern, see if I can afford to take off any ease or take off some of the seam allowance. And I think I'm gonna start by just taking off some of the seam allowance. So I'm trimming the seam allowance to about half. The original pattern seam allowance is about five eighths inch, one and a half centimeters. So I have a little bit to play around with here. This definitely helped out with the pattern placement, but I still don't think that that folder facing is gonna work. So I actually am going to make a placket for the front of this and not have a facing on the front of the dress. I'm gonna be doing a hidden button placket on this. So I've just kind of offset the fold of the fabric so that I can cut it right against the edge of the selvage here and you know conserve as much fabric as possible. This invisible placket situation will make more sense next week when I actually make the dress, but you can see here I was able to get everything onto the fabric. I think this is gonna work out really well. It is the next day and today I'm going to cut out that letter load dress, the little black dress that I made for the terracotta fabric. So I'm actually going to cut the top of the bodice away from the skirt on this dress because I, want, I just want them to be separate. I think it'll look nice. So I've done that here and then for the back bodice, I'm actually going to do some shearing at the top of the back bodice. So I'll probably end up just cutting this like a big rectangle and have shearing across the top of the bodice there. I'm also going to be adding a center front placket to this, as I mentioned before. So I've offset that front bodice from the edge a little bit to give myself some fabric for folding over to create that placket. To add shaping to the back bodice, because like I said, it's a big rectangle at this point, I'm just going to trace some lines for shearing that I'm gonna do later. I've really been enjoying these heat soluble fabric pins. They work great. So I'm drawing lines a half inch apart all the way down to the waistline of the back bodice. And last but not least, I'm going to cut the little peasant dress out of this blue linen fabric. I am folding the edges into the center here because my pattern is like perfectly wide enough to fit on this fabric and I have to cut both pieces on the fold. I'm also going to use my letter load dress to figure out how long I wanna make this because that dress is already an above the knee length dress. So I'm using that as a guide to decide on the length. And this is a very simple pattern because it's gonna have shearing and gathering to create the shape in the dress. So below the sleeve, it's basically a rectangle on both the front and the back bodice, which is really simple. I always save the easiest for last. All 
right, folks. I think that is it for this week. I think I'm going to wrap it up here for today's video. And I'm very excited about these projects. I love the fabrics. These linen colors are so pretty and so exactly what I've been looking for for a really long time. And for that little ditzy floral maxi dress that I made or that I updated earlier in the video, I actually think I'm going to shorten that dress. The more I think about it, the more I'm like, ah, I think it needs to be a short dress. So I'll probably do that in the next few days as well. So for that little peasant blouse pattern that I'm working on, I do have it graded and I do want to make it available as a pattern. And one thing I have kind of been thinking about doing, and I would love some feedback on this. I've had like, maybe three people have asked me if I have a Patreon or something like that, where people can kind of support the channel in another way besides, you know, watching ads. When you watch ads here on the channel, that is how I make money from the channel. But I know that there are some people that have mentioned that they'd like to support me in other ways. One way is just to buy some of my patterns, but another way is something like a Patreon. I actually do really enjoy following other creators on Patreon. So um, yeah, I've just been kind of doing a little bit of like market research to kind of figure out how I could add value there if I did decide to do that, which I'm not 100% sure yet. So a few things that I'm thinking of offering are um, early access to the videos here that I share on YouTube without ads. So you would get a special link to a video and then you'd be able to watch it without ads and you get to see it before everybody else. The second thing that I'm thinking of is offering kind of patterns light. So like graded patterns for projects that I'm working on that I'm not really ready to turn into a full fledged pattern with instructions and illustrations and all of that. Cause that just takes a really long time to develop all of that. And then have a video tutorial to go along with those patterns that would replace the instructions and all of the extra stuff that goes into, you know, packaging a pattern together. For instance, this little peasant blouse. If I release that to the Patreon members first, let you guys kind of play around with it, see how you like it, and we could kind of vote or have some sort of system for deciding if a pattern like that was going to be fully developed and sold on my website, for example, but you'd get first access to it. In addition to those things, I'm thinking too that if I did have a Patreon, maybe I would scale back the videos that I have here on YouTube to like once every two weeks, you know, a couple times a month and then possibly have bonus content over on the Patreon. So maybe one or two videos a month over on Patreon, in addition to the early access to these videos that you would get. So those are some things I'm tossing around. I would love your feedback on that. If that's something that you'd be interested in, I'm thinking that the max amount that I would charge on my Patreon would be like $5 a month. That seems to be pretty standard. And if you have any ideas for other things that you'd like to see, if I did have a Patreon, if, 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 if I did have a Patreon, I'm still kind of playing with the idea. It'd be a nice way for me to offer something a little extra to you guys without overextending myself. If that's something that you're interested in, definitely let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other ideas for types of things that, you know, you'd be interested in either seeing or other offerings that you think of that I could bring to the table for something like that, let me know. I would love your feedback on that. Okay, I think that is all I have for you guys today. If you enjoyed today's video and you'd like to see more from me, please be sure to subscribe and hit the little bell icon. That way you'll be notified when I release new videos in the future. And yeah, thank you for being here. I will see you in the next video. Bye.